This is a 1955 Topps Sandy Koufax in a PSA 9. How often would you expect the pop to rise on a high-grade card like this over time? Over the last 13 years, there have only been two new PSA 9s added to the pop count. How about this 55 Clemente in a 9? In the last four years, no more 9s have surfaced. The pop remains at 11. It seems quite reasonable that as cards age over 40 or 50 years or more, we would expect to see less and less being graded a 9 or above. Those of us who collected back in the 60s and 70s remember that cards usually came out of the pack off-centered and they weren't stored in the best of conditions. On top of that, how many unopened packs or new finds of mint cards are still being discovered? Common sense should tell us that the pop counts of 50-year-old cards should not rise very much over time. So how would you explain this? Between April 2018 through August 2019, the pop of the 1969 Reggie Jackson rookie card in a PSA 9 went from 34 to 40, an increase of 6 cards, or 15% in only 18 months. For comparison's sake, from November 2010 through April 2018, the card went from a pop of 30 to 34. That's almost 7.5 years in which the pop of the card only increased 1.6% per year. But in the last 18 months, more new PSA 9s hit the market than did in the preceding 7.5 years. This is now a 50-year-old card, so where are all these new PSA 9 cards coming from? If we look at sales records of the Jackson 9 between this time period, we see that PWCC sold two of these six newly graded PSA 9 examples. We can tell by their certification numbers and lighthouse labels that these two cards were among the six new PSA 9s that PSA graded after April 2018. As most of you know by now, PWCC has been implicated in a massive fraud scandal involving lower grade cards being altered by Gary Moser, submitted to PSA, getting higher grades, and then being sold by PWCC on eBay. Were these two PWCC cards altered? Let's take a look. Here are three 1969 cards I've owned for 40 years and have had graded by PSA. Notice how the cards fit tightly against the slab, with no noticeable gap. Now look at these two Reggie cards sold by PWCC. Notice the sizable gap between the top of the card and the inner part of the slab. If you've seen my prior videos, you know that most of the cards that have been outed as trimmed on the blowout forum have this noticeable gap. I call them Maraca cards because of the way they shake around in the slab. Are these two PWCC cards altered? What do you think? My research into pop counts of vintage cards reveals a questionable trend. Cards that, like a steroid taking home run hitter, post bigger numbers the older they get. Here's a quick example. Since 2014, the pop of the 1975 Topps George Brett PSA 9 has jumped from 192 to 299. That's a 38% increase in just 5 years, an average of 21 new PSA 9 Bretts each year. Now let's consider the 1969 Mickey Mantle. Between 2013 and 2016, the 1969 yellow letter mantle in a PSA 9 had its pop increase from 47 to 50 which is about 2% each year. However, in a one-year span between 2016 and 2017, the pop of the PSA 9 went from 50 to 59. The nine additional cards were a 15% increase in the pop in just one year. Using YouTube videos of PSA reveals, I was able to narrow down the approximate range of certification numbers that these nine cards would fall under. Then, using PSA sales data, I found that eight of these newly graded nines went up for auction in 2017 and 2018. It's probably not a surprise that all eight cards were sold through consigners, which included PWCC, Probstein, and Heritage Auctions. Before 2016, there weren't many auctions of these nines. In 2014, there were only four. There were no auctions in 2015, which probably caused prices to spike in 2016. By 2017, the eight new PSA 9s entered the market and suddenly there were 11 auctions of these cards. Prices dropped 18%. They fell another 21% in 2018. If you had been holding a Mantle 9 graded before November 2016, your card was now worth a third less than it was three years before. And this is in a market where high-grade Mantles are gold. Were any of these cards altered? 
Here's two that I found that again show that noticeable gap in the slab. One of them has a gap at the top and another on the side edge. What do you think? I need to say here that doing research on pop numbers over time is extremely challenging because PSA only makes the current pop available. For this project, I had to search back through years of auction research data to find collaboration of the pop counts. And there's so much of this information that is just not available. I suspect that there are many more vintage cards that experience such a climb in pop counts, but there just isn't enough public information to verify it. But here's the worst example I did find. This blowout forum has a 2009 advertisement from a known card doctor for a PSA 10 Superstars card from 1968. The pop then was only 5. By November 2016, the pop was 12. By July 2019, it had shot up to 20. From 5 to 20 in only 10 years, and a 40% increase in its pop in less than 3 years, all on a card that is more than 50 years old. What do you think about this increase in pop counts in the last two years? Does this increase seem natural and normal to you? Could these cards be brand new to the hobby after 50 years, or are they perhaps crossovers from Beckett or SGC? Or does this seem to be further evidence of altered cards being certified by PSA? We know there is a strong demand among collectors for high-grade, perfectly centered cards. Did the card doctor simply manufacture these cards out of lower grade examples to satisfy that collector demand? If these are altered cards, what does that say about the legitimacy of the high grade vintage card market? Or cards in the PSA set registries? I welcome your thoughts and comments below, and I appreciate your subscriptions, thumbs up, and sharing videos like this. Thanks, and collect what you love.